Good day everyone and once again we're back together uh, looking at question 10 this time around uh, from our DBE November 2021 paper um, and for those who've written this exam it's in no way trying to stress you out uh, but of course we're trying to help those who will be continuing with physics uh, and you know obviously there are those who will be going for marking uh, just to make sure that we you know can discuss and you know, they can uh, use it easily as well for reference and, and all of that. Okay, so uh, if you haven't subscribed, please just be part of the family. All right. And, uh, uh, you know, uh, please just throw in good comments and tell us how this channel is able to help you. All right. And we'll continue dishing out just uh, good content uh, all the time. All right. So uh, today we are looking at uh, the photoelectric effect. Okay. Uh, that's on question 10. So let's look at the question that we're given. They say the relationship between frequency and maximum kinetic energy of photoelectrons emitted from two cathodes M and N um, of different photoelectric cells is investigated. Uh, that sounds like a mouthful. Um, so they say the graphs below uh, have been obtained from the results. Okay. Uh, usually we have this graph the other way around, but of course, examiners being examiners, they have to try and throw in a, you know, a trick or two here and there. Right. So uh, now um, they say define the term uh, threshold frequency. Remember, we say that's the minimum frequency required to emit electrons uh, um, you know, from a metal surface. Okay. And again, I do want to apologize. I was, I did uh, take this video when there was load shedding. Uh, so in this case, our lighting may not be sufficient. However, I do hope that it does accomplish the, you know, the mission. Okay. Uh, they say, uh, how does the maximum kinetic energy of photoelectrons emitted from cathode N Okay, uh, compared to the maximum kinetic electro uh, energy rather um, of those emitted from M. So we are comparing N with M. Okay, when a light of frequency greater than 1.4 um, uh, times 10 to the power uh, 14 hertz is shown onto each of the cathodes. Now, I want you to please note. So if we look there, okay, uh, for each of the two graphs, okay, so uh, if you were to try and draw a horizontal line there, okay, so it means this would be the kinetic energy of the ones in M, all right, but if you draw from the same line, that would be the kinetic energy for the electrons uh, yeah, that are found in N. Okay, so in that case, all right, the ones that are in N would be greater than, would have a greater kinetic energy compared to the ones of uh, M, right? And in this case, they said choose greater than, smaller than, or equal to, and in that case, it would definitely be greater than. Okay, right. Um, they now, uh, in the next question, uh, they say calculate, okay, I, if you wanted us to write that down, 10.2, uh, okay, there's our pen, it's going on strike, uh, so 10.2, that would be greater than, okay, right, so uh, in that case, the next question, they say, Calculate the value um, of fx, all right, so there's fx there, okay, uh, indicated on the graph. So when I look at the value of fx, it's actually associated with, uh, um, you know, this uh, m, okay, the cathode m. So in this case, can you see? This is when the kinetic energy is zero. That's the frequency when the kinetic energy is zero. So this would be my threshold frequency. Can you see that? Okay, so in this case, I'm going to simply say, okay, we've got, um, so we know our formula that's E is equal to omega zero plus uh, EK max. Okay, 
right so in this case we know that um, right so we have that the okay we can work out the work function uh, in this particular case okay uh, and remember we're looking for the frequency fx that has to do with the frequency of light when the kinetic energy the maximum kinetic energy is 23.01 times 10 to the power uh, um, um, uh, yeah minus 19 so um, so we're looking for all right so let's break it down okay and by the way if you still find this confusing uh, it means that you haven't watched our you know our videos on the photoelectric effect we've made it quite simple okay so omega zero in this case uh, remember this would be hf zero okay because once again I've got my threshold frequency for M there, okay, plus the kinetic energy, the maximum kinetic energy. We said that's, sorry, 23.01, okay, but this is times 10 to the power minus 19. Okay, so let's try and get that quickly. Uh, remember Planck's constant, uh, you know, that's 6.63 times 10 to the power minus 34. Okay, multiplied by our threshold frequency in this case uh, was 10.4, 10.40 uh, times 10 to the power 14, okay, plus, um, uh, you know, the a value of 23.01, okay, times 10 to the power minus 19, sorry, okay. Right, so we can calculate that, and uh, if we wanted to substitute on the other side, remember we still have that 6.63 times 10 to the power minus 34 uh, multiplied by fx. So it means we're going to get that and divide by that value. Okay, what would our final answer be? Okay, so I find the final value of fx uh, to be 4.51 course you can verify that answer uh, times 10 to the power 15 hertz okay uh, you know uh, it would actually make sense that it should be uh, actually higher than that value there um, so yeah um, if you wanted to break it down again it means that's 45.1 times 10 to the power 14 if you wanted to look at it that way and it makes sense that it should be higher than this value here. All right, uh, 10.4. They say the experiment is now repeated for cathode M, right? Uh, using a light of frequency Fx, um, but of higher intensity. Okay, now remember the moment we change the intensity um, in that case, uh, what does it affect? Okay. Uh, it affects the number of electrons emitted per second, okay, uh, and not the kinetic energy. Right, now they are asking us this, uh, the following question. Uh, they say, how will each of the following be affected? Choose increase, decrease, or no effect, okay? Um, so 10.4.1, they want to know the y-intercept of the graph. Now remember the y-intercept would uh, would be the threshold frequency, uh, and that doesn't change as long as we don't change the you know uh, the cathode, right? So in this case, it would be that be no effect. Okay. So 10.4.1, it would have no effect. Okay. And then they say uh, the number of electrons um, emitted per unit time, definitely uh, because the light that we are now using, uh, they say uh, it's got a higher intensity, okay? So in that case, the number of electrons emitted per second would actually increase. So increases, all right. And uh, finally, they say the maximum kinetic energy of the uh, emitted photoelectrons, again, it would have no effect on the, the kinetic energy of the electrons. So that would be no effect there. 
Okay. Right. Remember, the only thing that will change the kinetic energy of the uh, electrons is either uh, if I can use a light with a higher frequency or lower frequency, for that matter, if um, uh, if you know it would lower the the, the kinetic energy. Uh, but yeah, if I wanted to increase the you know the the kinetic energy, then I'd use a light which has higher kinetic. I mean, a uh, uh, higher uh, frequency okay um, and I would uh, if you what you can also do is just change that uh, cathode there if you would use the a cathode with a, a lower threshold frequency or a lower work function that, rather uh, that would also uh, affect the kinetic energy of your photoelectrons okay right so uh, in that case uh, that is how the cookie crumbles a really easy question okay so um, I hope that you were able to enjoy it as I was uh, we're looking at uh, uh, physical science of course we'll be looking at chemistry as we keep continuing uh, to just review how that paper went otherwise uh, from me for now I will see you guys later on sharp sharp